Hey Wargamers, today I want to do a quick video talking about something that has me super excited and that is the new KX-139 uh, battle suit from Forge World. It's about the size of a Titan and it has a ton of guns on it. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I got some pictures for you here. There's also a link to the original uh, Fate 212 story in the description below and uh, as well as a link to a Bell of Lost Souls story on it too. Um, but yeah, so it's been out for a few days now, so you probably might have gotten a chance to look at it. I don't know. Um, but I just want to kind of go over what the rumors are saying and kind of how I think it might uh, turn out in the long run for you. So uh, let's take a look at some of those pictures. All right, right off the bat, you guys can tell this thing looks amazing. It has uh, three sets of ion cannons or ion accelerators on each arm. Uh, it has two smart missile systems right under the kind of breastplate and then two presumably twin link burst cans under each breastplate as well. Um, and then of course the, the defining feature is uh, this set of three, um, three weapons on top that uh, really just are massive, massive guns. Um, and so if we look at the actual Fate 212 uh, story, we can see uh, kind of get an idea of what some of the what the rules might be like. Um, this is from somebody that was at the Forge World Open Day. Uh, and he said that in regards to the rules, there are none written as of yet. However, he can confirm that the tracked mounting on the back does indeed house three rail type weapons, all independently posable. The current thinking is that while it is a rail weapon for all intents and purposes, it will have a multi-role purpose. One is a D-shot, which had to happen. They need something to take the knights down. Uh, the second uh, firing mode is armor splitter, uh, multi-shot mode, which is designed to rip uh, structure points or hull points off targets, and then a barbarian style firing mode allowing the uh, KX suit to literally carpet bomb from afar. Uh, the brace of triple ion cannons on each arm, they are unsure of whether it will be uh, three like a heavy three weapon or perhaps rapid fire. Uh, he goes on to say that this will be a super heavy walker. Uh, it is commanded by three crewmen. Uh, as such, it will be able to fire all its weapons and at separate targets. It has the special abilities of being able to snap fire or overwatch. Um, unlike other super heavies due to a uh, pumped up counter fire defense system. Uh, it doesn't fly. It doesn't have a flying mode like the uh, Ivara does, um, but as it has, as it is a super heavy walker, it will move 12 inches normally. Uh, it doesn't have a Nova charge. The uh, one of the designers said that due to its size, there would be uh, adequate shielding to, in essence, be constantly on Nova charge, therefore keeping the rule set simpler. Um, in addition to the current loadout. Uh, one of the developers is also working on a brace of triple barrel fusion style weapons and also some ideas to replace the back mount rail weapons with missile racks, comps pods, etc. Um, he also said that uh, this model is complete and off to the mold makers, so he expects it to be out in the next two to three months, um, and the price would be about 225 pounds. Uh, which, uh, you know, it's quite a lot. Let's actually see what that is in dollars. It's 325 US dollars. So um, not cheap, but uh, that is a ton of resin. Um, yeah, so... Let's talk about some of these uh, rules, rumors. Um, as far as the weapons having three different types of shots, I think that makes makes sense. Um, it, you know, having a D shot, I think makes sense for a weapon that size. Uh, an armor splitter probably makes sense too. You know, it says multi-shot mode, which is de designed to uh, strip off hull points. You know, I would imagine that would be like a, a three shot strength 10 AP1 type thing or maybe strength 8 although 
a weapon that size, I would not imagine being strength eight. So, um, I, I, I am not sure exactly what, how that would really differentiate, differentiate itself significantly from the D shot. Um, and then the bombardment style, I think makes sense too. So, um, you know, I could see having three different firing modes, but I also could see just having two, like one D shot and one, and one, uh, you know, kind of, you know, like heavy, heavy three large blast type thing. Um, it says the brace of triple ion cans on each arm uh, will either be three shots or rapid fire. Uh, it seems weird that they would have three guns and have it just be rapid fire. The only other time that they've done something similar to that is with the um, the flamer on the Ivara, uh, at least in the tower range that I know of. Um, generally, they want to keep the number of barrels the same as the number of shots kind of thing. Um, I mean, that, that's not exactly true, but like, you know, burst cans are, are now... Uh, four shots instead of three shots because they have four barrels um, type of thing and so it I would think it would be weird for that to be rapid fire um, I think it would make more sense for it to be three shots but who knows um, they generally put a, a fair amount of thought into these things um, before they let them go so uh, maybe in in the small amount of playtesting that they do do or, or don't do or whatever uh, maybe they come to the conclusion that three shots is too much so that'd be fine. Um, rapid fire is, is good. You still get two of them. Um, you get two weapons, right? One for each arm. Uh, having the uh, ability to overwatch is uh, consistent with the rest of the Tau um, design, right? That, that uh, you know, we have supporting fire and, you know, overwatch is kind of a big deal for us. So um, I think... It makes sense that this thing might be able to overwatch from a fluff perspective. Um, that's not wouldn't be surprising. I also would not be surprised if they didn't have that though. Um, you know, and moving 12 inches that's that's not bad. Although I can't imagine it needing to um, move around uh, for range much, considering uh, the weapons that it's carrying around. Uh, I would expect ranges of at least 36 inches for the ion cannons um, but probably it's you know 60 70 all around with the exception of the these kind of secondary weapons the swarm missile systems and the burst cannons but really those those are not things that you're going to be catering your uh, your strategy to right you're going to be using this thing because of the big ends not because of the little guns so um, the only time you'd really need to move uh, is for tactical re reasons and to avoid combat or climb objectives and stuff like that. So uh, movement isn't a, a huge concern. Um, but yeah, no Nova charge. Uh, you know, I think that that's fine um, considering the number of guns that this thing has. Uh, you know, having to have a Nova charge uh, would be just another layer of, layer of complexity, so I would be okay with this thing not having a Nova Charge, especially if it already has three different firing modes for its, um, for those three back weapons. Uh, that would be um, a lot to deal with, so I think, I think that would be fine if it didn't have a Nova Charge. But, yeah. Uh, as for options for other types of weapons, that would be really cool. You know, Forge World likes to have their you know, a lot like their Dreadnoughts and their Titans have um, interchangeable arms and, and that sort of thing. I could see something similar for the back of, back of this guy. Um, you know, again, they said like a fusion type thing. Uh, you know, that I guess so. Um, you know, they did have the fusion, the fusion turret for the rip, uh, for the hammerhead for a while. Um, and so, or I think they still do. Um, but the, you know, they have that and that's, you know, would be similar to a transition from this real weapon to um, a fusion weapon here. Um, a missile battery, uh, that would also be cool. Um, comms really, comms really seems a little weird to me. I, I would be
be surprised if they did something like that just because the Tau don't currently have anything like that. Um, and so maybe if they did do that, that would be an, a welcome addition. But, um, you know, as is, it it seems like a weird, a weird direction to go um, with this, unless it had some sort of, I, I could see it being some sort of uh, shield generator, though, kind of like a, like a Morkanot, or is it a Gorkanot? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I could see it having some sort of shield um, where it could extend to nearby units to give them invulnerable saves um, instead of having this big, this big gun. I could see some sort of support like that, but like a comms relay would might be a little weird to have on on such a large model. Um, but yeah, so I think this is really exciting. Uh, this looks really cool. For the price, it probably will be a while until I get one, if I ever do. Um, but uh, it's really exciting. I love the aesthetic of the weapons on the back. The head, again, is a little tiny head, um, which is fine for me. I kind of like that. But um, this thing is just massive. Uh, it, it does differentiate itself quite significantly from the look of the other um, the other suits. It is quite bulkier, but that's what you would expect with uh, such a, you know, large model with uh, a Titan class thing. It wouldn't necessarily uh, look sleek and slender. Um, of course, there's a counterpoint to that in the, the Eldar Wraith Knight, but um, that's all there. This is Tau. So, yeah, I think it looks. I think it looks great. Uh, it's like a giant broadside, really. Um, so. Yeah, it looks like it's a completely independent resin kit. At first, I thought maybe it took some parts from the Riptide, um, particularly in the legs, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's completely a completely independent kit, fully resin, um, not, not using plastic at all. So uh, let me know what you guys think of this guy in the comments below. And of course, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.